On a personal note, I just want to thank all of you for your well wishes, thoughts, and prayers. The power of prayer, the healing power of prayer is uh, at work. And I'm feeling better each day. Another thing that's helped is uh, I've had a lot of time to watch basketball. And uh, I must say for me, that's been a healing experience as well. I know it's not for some others, but... That was like on cue. I want to tell you a story about Adolescent Will. Now, Adolescent Will, it's not his real name. He was struggling with school and life. His mother did everything she could to keep him from failing. Will stubbornly resisted her efforts. One day, the school counselor called her in. He said, you need to let Will fail. The mother was shocked. She said, I can't do that. It's not in my DNA as a mom to do that. The counselor said, if you don't let him fail, he will not succeed. Because her way was not working, she decided to help Will only when asked. The result Adolescent Will failed more than one class that semester, and he suffered the natural consequences. Ten years later, Will was in a master's program and doing well. Isn't the mother in this story a lot like the father in today's gospel? For isn't that how God loves each of us? The father loved his prodigal son. Father wants his son to succeed. Yet the father lets the younger son go, despite knowing the son would probably fail and suffer the consequences. As a loving parent, the father took no delight in his son's pain or failure. Although the father desperately wanted his son to come home, he did not pursue him. A.A. would say that the father let his son hit bottom. However, the minute, the minute he saw his son from a distance heading down the road toward him, he ran to meet him. What a sight that must have been. This means, this means the father kept vigil, watching and waiting or his son to come home. There was no, I told you so. There was no recrimination, no belittling. The son had suffered and had decided on his own to return home. The son simply expected to be accepted as a hired hand. But the father, the father had other ideas. For the father had already forgiven his son. Now was the time for reconciliation instead. Thus, the restoration is complete. In fact, instead of sneaking him in through the back door, the father orders a banquet. God, God does this for us. All of us, all of us have been the younger son at some point. 
We've known the pain of estrangement. We've known the feeling of unworthiness, the desire to come home. The role of the priest in the sacrament of reconciliation is to welcome us home. I am never to be judge and jury. For confessors are sinners too. We do not have to be perfect to come home. We only have to be sorry for our sins and desire to love God more. We, we are all works in progress. And the church, after all, is not a hotel for saints. It is, as Pope Francis puts it, a field hospital for sinners. We are all sinners who want to be more holy. The priest hearing our confession as well as the one confessing. If anyone here has been away, Lent is always a good time, a good time to come home. Finally, the way the Father deals with his prodigal son is an excellent model for us in dealing with parents, siblings, friends, neighbors, children, fellow parishioners, employees, or co-workers, and yes, strangers too. Letting go is not abandoning. It is realizing that we cannot do for others what they need to do for themselves. Adolescent Will's mother could tell us all the ways that don't work after she let him free to fail, he began to succeed. Letting go is respecting eno another enough to let him or her free to make choices. Parents need to provide guidance with increasing freedom and responsibilities as children get older. For example, a parent can force a teen to go to Mass every weekend. But the first chance they get to make their own decision, they will skip church if it is not a value for them. As with the prodigal son, it takes time for sons and daughters to appreciate the counsel and values of their parents. When we let go, we can still listen actively with empathy. We can still confront with love, not with shame. We can still encourage, but not demand or try to manipulate a desired outcome, set boundaries in our own homes, and love others without supporting all of their choices. My friends, God wants us at his table. Once we know the joy of reconciliation with God through Christ, we are charged with the responsibility of being his ambassadors. God wants us to go out, to go out and tell others that Christ has removed all barriers between us and our loving Father, who eagerly awaits our homecoming. If there is anything in our lives that separates any one of us from God, well, Lent, Lent is a good time, an excellent time, to be reconciled and to know 
once again the freedom of coming home. Amen.